with nine years of trading experience, I've obviously seen what is important for myself as a trader to be profitable and to be consistent. So in today's video, we'll be taking you guys through if I had three months or 90 days of learning what steps I would be taking and what I would be learning in that 90 days. So the key thing once again is to build your trading foundation. A lot of people skip lesson one or skip the theory because once again, I just want to get straight into the markets. But at the end of the day, if you don't have that foundation, that is obviously where trading becomes difficult. To understand what the Forex market is, it's obviously the currency. We're trading currencies against one another. So if you exchange currencies traveling from country to country, that's called foreign exchange. That creates the market around that where you don't physically buy or sell the currencies, but you're obviously trading the currencies based and what they're doing. Patents is formed by buyers and sellers throughout time and that is really why we're able to trade Forex as patents repeat itself. So the key players in the market, number one is the banks. The banks are the biggest contributor to the market. They trade with the same market, they see the same thing as us. Number two, your investment funds and finally us, we see the retail traders. We have no effect on the market, but we can try and understand what the bigger institutions are doing. Um, and obviously try and replicate what they're doing. Then we have the exchange rate, which is obviously what we're trading. We're trading two currencies against one another. For example, the Australian dollar versus the US dollar. Australian dollar being the first currency, the base currency, always one. One Australian dollar equals how many USD? And in this instance, it's 0 0.66395. So we will be trading that currency based on it's going up or down. Then in the market, you get pips or points. So the market doesn't move in cents or rands or Australian dollars, it moves in pips and points. For me, I always keep it simple. I'd stick to points because points is one to one. The price moves from that high level over there to that low level over there. That once again is a specific range. If price moves from there to there, you guys will see the first figure that pops up is 372. So that means it's 372 points and 37.2 pips. The points divided by 10 gives you perps. So once again, why not just use points because one is one when it gets to points. So it's really important to understand perps and points because if you place your stops above that level, your risk is one, three, four, and your reward is obviously 392. Then in Forex, you trade with a lot size. You don't allocate $10 or $20 to a specific trade. You trade with what's called a lot size. The smallest lot size is a one cent and there's obviously no maximum lot size. So if you trade with a one cent, that means you're risking one cent of the dollar for every point the market moves. So if we look at a position like this, you have a trade in there, your stops is above that previous high and your take profit target is over there. Stop loss wise, we're sitting on 124 points, so 124. And if we're using a one lot size, that means we're risking $1.24 on this specific position. And our potential gain, if we go to our specific target, that means we're trading all the way down to a 387. So that means if price hits our take profit target, we have 387 points. And that will also lead to $3.87 on that specific position. So that's why points is important and your lot size is important because your lot size will determine your risk or your reward. Any trader needs a broker. So you get the actual market, you get the broker, which is the middleman and you get yourself the trader. So it's really important to choose a reputable broker, choose a regulated broker and choose a broker that will take care of your funds and have safety for your specific funds. So obviously I'm working with markets.com. Markets.com is one of the most highly regulated brokers in the world for trading conditions, but once again, safety of funds is the first initial thing that I'm looking for. And if you join markets.com, you will get access to my full course that I'm going through now, 100% for free by simply funding your trading account. Then the most traded currencies, there's multiple currencies that's tradable. There's no one-stop shop. For me, every trading currency is tradable. It's always about what is gonna work for you. So through trading, through predicting, through time, you're gonna figure out what currencies you understand and what currencies you don't understand. Obviously, the most traded currencies are easier to understand, but as a new trader, I always suggest focus on two. Don't try and trade every single currency. If you keep losing on a currency, move it away, find a new one. But focus on maximum two currencies to stick to every single day. Figure out how they move, how they operate, what the risk is, what the reward is, what session they're moving in. So focus on two currencies. 
And like I said, the only way to do that is by physically trading or number two by predicting. So use the publish tool on TradingView, go through the currencies that you're interested in every single day, wake up, do a prediction on that specific pair and the trades that plays out, you know, obviously your success rate based on that specific currency. Then platforms, what platforms do you need as a new trader? So obviously if you sign up with the broker, you're gonna open a MetaTrader 4 or 5 account that is your platform where you will be physically executing trades. Then you have TradingView. TradingView is an analyzing platform that I use. Only reason for that is it's really simple to use. There's also a video on how I use TradingView. Then finally, you have investing.com. Investing.com is where I check the upcoming news. If you know there's news coming up, there's one of two ways to obviously handle it. Either look to not trade that specific day or that specific time, or obviously try and put in some time into fundamentals, which we will do a little bit later on as well. Then we have leverage. So Forex is a leverage product, meaning if you go and buy cryptos, for example, you put in $100, you're gonna own $100 worth of crypto. In Forex, you don't physically own it, so it's a leverage product. So leverage starts with one to 100, meaning that if I put $10 or $100 in a specific position or in a specific account, I have 100% of my money in that account and I can risk 100%. So the biggest lot size you can use with 1 to 100 leverage is at 10 cents. But you can push your leverage up to 1 to 500, for example, meaning that I can now risk five times my specific trading account. So that pushes you up to a 50 cent lot size. So yes, with higher leverage, you can trade a little bit bigger because you have more buying power, but it also means that you are risking more of your capital so I always suggest starting with the lower leverage and build consistency first. If you're finding $100, you're not going to become a millionaire tomorrow. But once again, if you build consistency first by focusing on small leverage, small lot sizes and build consistency, later on you will understand how to use leverage to your advantage when trading. With any Forex broker, you get spreads and quotes. So if you enter a trade, you're always going to start in negative. So that's the spread charges, just like with insurance brokers or any broker in the world. So you get the market actual market price, which is the bid price, and you get the Forex broker price, which is the ask price. So that difference is obviously the spread, and that's why it's not a negative when you enter a trade. In Forex, you can only buy or sell. Buy means you're betting on price to go to the top side, and sell means you're betting on price to go to the downside. The reason this is once again possible is because of previous patterns being formed within the specific market. So if you buy that price, anything to the top side is profits, anything to the downside is losses. And obviously with sell is the complete opposite. There's previous selling pressure. If you sell there, anything to a downside profits, anything to a top side negative. So you get three types of trading. Number one is technical. Technical analysis is analyzing the patterns that's being created by the banks and the big institutions over a period of time. So you have so many different technicals from trend lines, support resistance, FIB, psychological levels, so many different technicals. But once again, everything works. You only need the things that works for you and what your brain sees. We look at this specific position you can sell that specific market based on the trend line based on the fib based on the resistance so it doesn't matter if you have it in or not market will sell from that price but obviously it's tools that help you to obviously identify key buying and selling areas within the market then we get fundamental trading which is obviously news trading for me i use fundamental hand in hand with technical if i know for example here we can see there's a key buying area and the news are coming out and the news data is telling me that obviously this specific currency should be going up that is where you have a perfect execution on that trade which your technical and your fundamental lines up to that specific position then in the market we get candlestick so the market moves in what's called candlestick so a green candle is up called a bullish candle a red candle is down called a bearish candle so there's the open price if price starts pushing down it will be red creating a low price Past the open price and it becomes green, forming a high price, closing there, and obviously having a close price. So where the close price closes will be where the next candle will open and the same thing will keep happening. The color of the candlestick really doesn't matter. It's always about the bodies and the tails. So the market have different time frames. If you're on a four hour time frame, that means one candlestick represents four hours. If you're on the daily time frame, one candlestick represents one day. So it's really important to understand the higher the time frame, the more important the specific candlestick. Then we have news, which is obviously on investing.com, like I explained a little bit earlier as well. So you always get your forecast, your actual and your previous. For me, I always look at the narrative around what is the lowest and what's the highest. Here we can see, for example, the lowest we've ever been is 165, the highest is 504. So if the prediction comes back at 200, we know we're really close to the lowest we've ever been. 
So price is most more likely to come back stronger or news event is most likely to come back stronger. In this instance, it's a dollar based fundamental. So that means dollar will increase in strength. So if I'm trading a, a currency like AudioSD and I know the dollar will be gaining strength, that will indicate that this should be shorting. So if it lines up with my analysis that the analysis is telling me to short, fundamentals is telling me to short, that's obviously where I want to get into a position because it will help me to obviously get that momentum that I need to finalize and end my trade. Then the second most important tool for me is market structure. Market structure is the key indicator to my trading. So in market structure, in an uptrend, you have a higher high, a higher low, a higher high, a higher low, a higher high, a higher low. So as long as price stays above the higher low, the previous high low price is still in the buying trend. So what's really important to understand, and this is something that I struggled for multiple years with, is to understand this different trend. So on the weekly, we'll be in an uptrend, but on the daily, we might be in a downtrend. So that big pullback on the weekly, might look something like this on a daily time frame. So in a daily time frame, we are actually in a downtrend because price is creating a low low, a lower high, a lower low, lower, lower high, lower low. But eventually bouncing into our key weekly high low, and then from there, weekly is up and daily is up. So your better positions is based with both daily and weekly is an uptrend, but obviously it is possible to trade the pullback and I will show you guys how to do it. We have what's called a change of character or obviously a shift of momentum. If price is in an uptrend, we're looking for higher highs and higher lows. So every time price forms a higher low, we're obviously looking for price to go and form a higher high. So in an instance where price comes down and forms a lower high, that is our first indication of a possible shift of momentum. The price then forms a lower high, failing to push into a higher high that is our first indication of a shift of momentum. Or price goes and forms a lower low that takes out the previous high low. That is also indication. And then when we have both a low low and a lower high in place, that is obviously where price shifts momentum. If we look at the current chart as well, price is trending to the top side, high, 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 low. Price now forms a little bit of a lower high, indicating that price is going into a selling trend. That also helps you because if price moves into this key buying area here at the bottom, you already know that we're not looking for buy because we have the lower high. After lower high, we have a lower low being formed. And that is your indication for the shift of momentum. Then for me, it's about allocating a key handful of technicals, technicals that you understand. So there's no best technical, there's no better technical. Um, if we just look at this current price or current structure, we have a few things. So for me, one tool that I love to use is support resistance. Support being your floor, supporting the market to go to the top side, resisting resistance being your roof, resisting price to go to the downside. So support resistance is placed on where does market actually go up. So yes, we have a spike there. So for me, Forex is the art of consistency. Price does spike to that level, but from there we have one way going up. From there, price goes straight up. From there, price goes straight up. So you need two points, obviously, to indicate the support or resistance. If we look to the left-hand side, from there, price goes up, pushes down, goes up, pushes down. But from there, straight down. From there, straight down. So that will be our key area of resistance. So what happens to these spikes, okay? That spikes is known as supply and demand. We also have a full video on that as well. So from your resistance to the peak of that spike is where your area of um, supply is at, so selling supply. Then from the key area of support to that bottom spike is where your area of demand is at. The key thing about supply and demand is if supply and demand is taken out or broken, that is when you have a shift of momentum and obviously when you're looking to trade the other way. So if that area is broken, we create a lower low. After low, low, we're looking for lower high or a selling level. But this is a buying level. So if price does take out that level, immediately we're going to move our focus to where does the market sell from? So what a lot of traders will be doing is looking for a sell from there, but price will be moving into our selling range that we can see there to the left hand side. So price will most probably pop into that level, push a little bit down, then eventually moving to that level because we want to that level to create a lower high and that will obviously be our indication for, for a continuation to the downside. That is also where a trend line will come into play. So there's multiple technicals once again that will come into play and that will obviously work. So if we add that, we know we're looking for that specific range. So now this is quite a big range to trade from. So how do you refine it? By adding more technical. So if price does pull back, we can add our FIB. In a selling trend, you add your FIB from high to low. 
So then we know we're looking for trade within the 61 to 78 percent FIB range. Okay, so that's point number one. Point number two, we have a psychological level. So psychological level is round numbers. So 6, 6, um, 6, 250, 6, 500, 6, 7, 50, and then 6, 7. So there's four psychological levels within a thousand point range. And just like that, we have refined our approach and we know exactly what point of interest we're looking for to execute a specific trade. Then from there, it's really important to understand this specific tool called risk to reward. What am I risking? What am I making? If I'm going to take a short position there, I always put my stop loss above my area of supply or demand. And then we're obviously setting out that target based on the next available buying area. So the next available buying area will be in that range, not there, there. Because from there, once again, price physically goes up and there's the spike and that will obviously form our area of demand over there. So that will be our target for this specific position. So if we look at this, we're risking 200, let's say 300 points, a little bit of a bigger stop loss. So we're risking 300 points. Okay, if we're risking 300 points, so risk to reward goes hand in hand with risk management. So if we're risking 300 points on this trade, what can we be making? So 1,500. So for me, realistically, anything from a one to two risk to reward ratio is really good because meaning for every 1% I'm risking, I'm making 2%. If you risk 1% to make 2%, you only need to be profitable 4 out of 10 times, which is 40% to actually make money in the long run. So that's why it's really important to have a good risk reward ratio tool. And if you can extend that trade to a 1 to 5, that means you have a 1 to 5% success rate and you only need to be profitable 20% of the time, 2 out of 10 times for you to end up in profits with your money. So now the risk comes up. Okay. If you have, for example, a $250 account, which is yeah good for me to start with, you want to risk X amount. So let's say you want to risk $25 per trade. So let's say you want to risk 10%, which I don't advise. I always start with low risk. So let's say you want to risk actually, let's say $5 per position that you're taking. Okay. Now you can figure out how do I risk $5 on this trade? So initially my risk is obviously 300 points. If I use a one cent, times 300 that means that i'm risking three dollars okay it's really important really really important to write down your risk management know exactly what you're going to be risking before you enter a trade because risk reward and all these tools only work once again if you have the same risk management over and over and over again so if we are risking um three dollars on that position we have two dollars worth of risk left if we have two dollars worth of risk left we can't add another one cent on that specific level because that will be six dollars worth of risk but what we can do is once price goes 100 points into negative to 200 then we can enter another one cent position because if we enter one percent position over there with the same stop loss that means that we're going to be risking so i keep deleting it so that means if we're going to enter on the 200 point mark as well so we're going to have a 200 point stop loss. Number one, we're increasing our risk reward. Okay, so price goes a little bit against us, which happens more often than you'll think as a new trader. The price goes a little bit against us into our negative rather than panicking like most traders. Once price goes against them, they exit their trade because they're panicking. They never leave it for their stop loss. So rather than panicking and closing our position, we're actually entering another position. Look at the risk reward one to eight on that position smaller stop loss bigger take profit margin and with the 200 point stop loss now we're risking two dollars on that trade and that means we have a total of five dollar risk but if price goes away the two dollar becomes two times eight it's 16 and on that specific trade three times five is 15 so we're making a total of 31 dollar return based on a five dollar risk so that means for every five dollar we were risking on this trade we made 31 dollars and that obviously leads to one to six risk reward ratio meaning we only need to be profitable 15 percent of the time to be profitable in the long run all right guys thank you for watching and supporting i hope you guys learned something through this video once again build your foundation number two find your technicals whether it be trend line support resistance whether you combine those technicals from there, learn market structure, understand how the structure of the market work by physically putting in the time and understanding how price flows. From there, implement a good risk, reward, risk management and a risk reward plan in place. And then from there, it's about practice, practice, practice the whole time and getting to a point where you build consistency. 
don't go for the money don't try and become a millionaire overnight focus on consistency and from there you will find ways how to scale your capital how to increase your money and obviously how to get to a point where you're more profitable and more consistent